Hello, everyone. Uh, this is our project on Hephaestus. I'm Megan Snodgrass. I'm Olivia Sprainley. I am Chloe Sears. And I'm Erin Schneider. Um, so to start off, I will talk about kind of the myth of Hephaestus. So Hephaestus was the Greek god of fire, blacksmith, and forges. Um, Hephaestus was associated with a volcano. So in Greek mythology, um, it suggests that his workshop was underneath a volcano and the volcano, it was used as a forge or like his blacksmith and craftsmanship and stuff like that. Um, in Roman, Hephaestus means Vulcan, which is derived from volcano. So all of his power kind of came from this volcano mythology. Um, there's two stories about Hephaestus. So the one that is not is famous is um, that Hera had him alone and without the need of his father Zeus, um, kind of as a retribution because Zeus had given birth to Athena without the use of Hera. Um, the one that's most common though in Greek mythology that everyone knows is that um, Hera and Zeus had him together. And because of his ugliness and lameness, he was thrown from Mount Olympus to um, Lemnos, Lemnos, the island of Lemnos. <laughs> um, and there he became famous for his craftsmanship. Um, he made the winged helmet and sandals of Hermes and all the other things listed. Um, he was also considered to be one of the 12 deities of Mount Olympus. Okay, so now we're going to go and talk a little bit about the culture of the Festus myth. Um, like Men Megan mentioned, uh, his parents couldn't bear his lameness. And after a serious argument, his father hurled him from Olympus into the Aege Aegean Sea, uh, which is near Lemnos Island. As you can see, that Aegean Sea is, is highlighted in blue. And then Lemnos Island is a little bit higher up there, uh, which is awesome. And then he also uh, originally was a deity of Asia Minor, which is the uh, territory to the far right. Um, Hephaestus had an important place of worship within Lycian, which was uh, a part of Olympus. And he had a cult in 600 BCE within the Athens area. Um, now, Hephaestus was the, uh, from a cultural perspective, was the demon of fire coming up from the earth, which like Megan mentioned, was this idea of his uh, area that he lived within Lemnos Island was a volcano. So um, he had like a lot of interaction with fire along with also um, having uh, industrial capabilities related to forges, which is like making weapons using fire. Um, uh, his story is in Greek-based mythology, which was specifically within that island of Lemnos, like I mentioned. Um, the culture of ancient Greece, uh, kind of the idea was that there were many ruling gods, and there were the big three, which were Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades, and the way that people kind of maintained their status was via power. Now, because Hephaestus wasn't living on Olympus, um, he gained his power and following due to his ability to support other gods via his industrial capabilities, which is really interesting. And also from a more socio-cultural uh, perspective is that he was one of the only gods to ever return to um, uh, Olympus after being exiled in ancient Greece, which is really interesting to see that because of what he was able to do with fire and with making these weapons, um, he became valuable enough to be let back in, which is different than most other stories. But that's a little bit about the culture of the Hephaestus myth. Okay, so Hephaestus was a very complex god. He is celebrated for being brilliant. He was a brilliant artist, inventor, and engineer, but his story also involves tragedy and revenge. He's often described as the only unattractive god. He had a major leg injury from when he was cast out and thrown out of Olympus, causing him to have a permanent limp. So he had an untamed beard and rough skin that was often depicted as burned and covered in soot. I think that the myth of Hephaestus kind of tells us about the positive and negative effects and uses of fire. So his appearance is kind of evidence of prolonged exposure to fire and metalworking and blacksmithing, but also um, he also showed how fire can be used in combination with other element earth to create really useful tools for both humanity and the other gods. 
like was mentioned previously, the gods in Olympus really relied on him heavily for the quality armor and weapons and jewelry that he made. His story, I think, promotes ingenuity and the use of fire in art creation and invention. And of course, Greek mythology as a whole had a really huge impact on ancient Greek culture and continues to impact Greek culture and many other cultures still today. So I think that the stories in Greek mythology are also a reflection of kind of the brilliant minds and innovators in ancient Greece. Ancient Greeks are responsible for many exciting technologies, including screws and gears and cranes and even alarm clocks and the list goes on. Um, but the story of Hephaestus, I think, is a reflection of this innovation. He himself which was an engineer and an inventor, and he even invented a device to help him be more mobile because of his leg injury, which was the first ever described wheelchair, which is very cool. So he invented and created lots of pools and palaces and famous regalia that we associate with the other gods. So I think that his story instilled both a fear and an appreciation for fire as a tool for Greek society. All right, so lastly, we're going to be talking about the lessons we can learn from Hephaestus's story. Um, as my group members mentioned earlier, he fell from Olympus, which resulted in ha him having curved feet and a limp, and this made him an outcast or a lame in the eyes of the other gods. His disability did not stop him from reaching his goals and becoming a skilled craftsman. This shows us that we should not let our limitations defi define us. The next lesson he showed was perseverance pays off. He worked for many hours to perfect each one of his creations, and he became one of the most skilled craftsmen in the Olympian pantheon because of his hard work and dedication. Uh, while perfecting his metalwork, Hephaestus experimented with fire and new tools and techniques. He taught us that we can use fire to our advantage when crafting, thus teaching us to embrace our um, creativity and explore new ideas and approaches. Another lesson is personal, personal fulfillment. And um, he remained humble and he didn't seek glory or fame, which reminds us that success is measured with personal fulfillment rather than fame and fortune. And lastly, the last lesson is forgiveness. And despite being mistreated by his mother and betrayed by his wife, he found a way to forgive them and continue to work alongside them without grudge or resentment. And here's our work cited. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.